Pursuant to Article 9, Section 16 of the Constitution of the Federated States of Micronesia and Title 3, Section 201 of the Code of the Federated States of Micronesia as set forth in the official rules of procedure of the FSM Congress, I hereby call the 23rd Congress of the Federated States of Micronesia special, Second Special Session to order. May I ask the uh, Sergeant at Arms to please escort uh, Senior Pastor uh, Reverend Midian Neth to the podium. Secretary General of the United Church of Christ, Pompey. May I ask that we all rise? and bow our heads for prayer. Almighty and merciful creator, we gather here today as elected representatives of our 23rd FSM Congress, second special session seeking your guidance and wisdom in our deliberation of our legislative measures. Grant us the courage to uphold justice and equality with compassion and understanding for those we serve. May our decision be guided by truth, integrity, and common good. Bless our efforts to work together in unity and respect, with open hearts and minds to listen and learn from one another. Listen more and speak less. May your light shine upon us as we navigate the challenges before us. We pray for your strength, patience, and discernment in the face of adversity, and for your grace to guide us towards solutions that we benefit or that will benefit all. May our words and action reflect your love and compassion for humanity. In your holy and mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Reverend Ned. Chief Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Abelo Alfonso. Casalelia Mang, A Mang. Senator Arutos. Yes. Senator Christian. Senator Figuier. Senator Coland. Senator Conman. Good morning. Floor Leader Lawrence. Hey, Amen. Sen Senator Nemeya. Yes. Vice Speaker Romalo. Hey, Amen. Senator Urusamal. Speaker Moses. Hey, Amen. Mr. Speaker, nine members are present. Thank you. For that, we have a quorum. Please note that the two members absent this morning, Chairman Rusmal is uh, on the island of Satawal, left there without any transportation back in time for session, so he is excused. And the uh, Chairman Golan uh, is out for medical reasons, so he's excused. We will now 
go down to the next item, Chief Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We're now on item number four. Please note that item number four is divided into two main parts, and the first part, it, part is on the special order for today's session. Well, the first item at hand is the credentials of the at-large senator-elect from the state of Koshai, and I will now appoint the Committee on Credentials, which will be chaired by Chairman Nimia of the state of Chuuk, Member, Madam Chair Abelio Alfonso, Chairman Figuier, State of Yap, and also Vice Speaker Romolo will be, will constitute the Committee on Credentials for the Senator at Large elect from the State of Koshai. We will now take a short recess so that they can break out into their caucus and come back with their report. Short recess. Congress is back in session. Let the record reflect that Chairman Golan has joined us for today's session. We now have 10 members present. And the next item on that particular uh, item four is the presentations of the report. So Chairman Nimia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, your credential committee had uh, uh, made its findings and recommendations, and they are presented henceforth in the report that I will be reading verbatim. And I'll do that for the sake of transparency. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Credentials, the which was referred the review of credentials for one member elect to 23rd Congress from the July 2023 special election, begs to leave the report as follows. On July 10, 2023, the National Election Director transmitted to Congress a premature certification of partial results of the July 4, 2023 special election. On September 12, 2023, the National Election Director certified the official results of the July 4, 2023 special election, certifying the winning candidate for the Koshraya at large seat as Yoselin G. Sigra, Koshraya State four year term seat. On September 28, 2023, Congress adopted the Credentials Committee report finding Yoselin G. Sigra not qualified to be seated in exercise of its exclusive constitutional power to be the sole judge of the elections and qualifications of its members under Article 9, Section 17. Subsequently, Speaker declared the Koshara at large seat Fagan and the Office of National Election Director proceeded with scheduling a special election for the vacancy. On October 2nd, 2023, Yoselin Chi Sigra filed a lawsuit against Congress and the National Election Director in the FSM Supreme Court for declaratory relief and injunctive relief, alleging that Congress exceeded its powers under the Constitution when it considered factors outside the eligibility requirements under Article 9, Section 9 of the FSM Constitution and seeking the court to cancel the special election. Sigra versus Moses, Civil Action Number 2023-018. On November 2nd, 2023, the FSM Supreme Court Trial Division issued an order granting declaratory relief finding. One, the FSM Constitution commits solely to Congress consideration only qualifications 
that are enumerated in the FSM Constitution or otherwise prescribed by statute, and two, Speaker's declaration of vacancy void. On November 17, 2023, the FSM Supreme Court Trial Division granted preliminary injunction against the Office of the National Election Director to stop the November 21st, 2023 election. On November 9, 2023, Congress filed an appeal of the Trial Division Declaratory Judgment with the FSM Supreme Court Appellate Division. Moses versus Sikra, Appellate Case Number P6-2023 and P8-2023. On March 15, 2024, the FSM Supreme Court Appellate Division affirm the trial division declaratory judgment and order granting injunctive relief. Your committee and credentials reviews the eligibility of Yoselin G. Sigra to be a member of Congress following final judgment by the FSM Supreme Court Appellate Division in Moses versus Sigra. Article 9, Section 9 of the FSM Constitution mandates that a person is eligible to run for election to be a member of Congress if the person is at least 30 years old on the day of the election, an FSM citizen by birth, a domiciliary of the state from which elected, and residing in the FSM for at least five years prior to election. A person is eligible to be a member of Congress under 9 FSM subsection 103 if one, 30 years or older by election day, two, a resident from the state which seeking election for at least five years prior to election day, three, FSM citizen, four, not under a current judgment of mental incompetency or insanity, five, not convicted of a felony by a FSM national court FSM State Court or Trust Territory Government Court. Your committee reaffirms Congress' exclusive authority as the sole judge of the elections and qualifications of its members. Article 9, Section 17 of the FSM Constitution dictates that Congress shall be the sole judge of the elections and qualification of its members, may discipline a member and by two-thirds vote may suspend or expel a member. Congress requested criminal background check on Yuselin Sikra from the FSM Department of Justice, National Police, FSM Supreme Court, and its State Police Chief, Attorney General, and State Court. In a letter dated July 17, 2023, the FSM Supreme Court certified to Congress that Yoselin G. Sikra did not have any felony convictions and no pardon records. In a letter dated July 28, 2023, the FSM Department of Justice National Police certified to Congress that Yoselin G. Sikra did not have any felony convictions. All state police chiefs certified to Congress that Yoselin G. Sikra did not have any felony convictions. All courts certify that Yoselin Chisigra did not have any felony convictions. In a letter dated November 14, 2022, the FSM Department of Health and Social Affairs reported to the election director that the department did not have any record of Yoselin Chisigra in their mental health data records. The committee requested photo registration records and candidate documentation submitted to the Office of National Election Director to demonstrate FSM citizenship by birth, permanent residence in the state where elected, and physically residing in the FSM for the last five years. Our conclusion, therefore, in the interest of upholding the final judgment from the FSM Supreme Court Appellate Division, 
in Moses versus Sikra, Abla case number P6-2023 and BA-2023, your committee on credentials recommends that Yoselin G. Sigra be permitted to take the oath of office and be seated as a member and senator of the 23rd Congress of the Fair States of Micronesia. Uh, that's the end of the report, and so I move for adoption of the report, Mr. Speaker. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the credentials committee offered orally by Chairman Nimiya be adopted. Discussion? Vice Speaker, you have something? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning to you and esteemed colleagues. I thank the Credential Committee for its work. It was not easy. But today, for the first time, this Congress is called to reverse its own decisions on admission of a member. The, credentials, the Credential Committee is now recommending admission of a member based upon the decision of the appellate level of the Supreme Court. The committee has done so because as a member of Congress, we are first and foremost duty bound to uphold the Constitution of the Federated States of Micronesia. So we are showing our respect to the Constitution by upholding the decision of the court. However, I for one find that court decision disappointing because I truly believe Congress being the sole judge of the qualification of its members, meaning that we are, no one else, get to decide. And in this case, we had already decided. Be that it may, the court has spoken. So to uphold our Constitution and ensure the smooth working of our institutions, I applaud the work and recommendations of the Credential Committee. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Chairman, uh, Vice Speaker Romula. Any further discussion? Chairman Christian, you have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Speaker and I join you in welcoming all who have joined us this morning for this very important special session, especially those who have come from Kusai uh, to join us this morning. In 1980, when I took the oath of office as a member of Congress, I swore to uphold a provision of the Constitution, provisions of the Constitution, which includes that Congress is the sole judge of anyone who would become a member. I'm a bit confused now, but like uh, Vice Speaker, uh, so I feel that the sanctity of our Constitution has been pierced, and the very important separation of power of the branches of government has been breached. But in a democratic society like ours, we tend to listen very carefully to what the judiciary or the justices will tell us. I am more confused by the fact that at one point, uh, the senator in question, senator-elect in question now, was removed from the bar and barred from practicing the law. But now the same court that removed her is telling Congress that we must sit this person in spite of all the reasons that made her ineligible to practice law. So ineligibility to practice law, but eligible to make laws. That confuses me as a non-attorney because I have not been able to deal into it more deeply. But my concern now is no longer the individual uh, before Congress, but the question of 
separation of power and how true we are to holding our government to that great noble idea. The recommendation of Congress is that because the court says uh, see this candidate, Congress is obeying it out of respect of our common interest in a democratic society. And so today, while nothing has changed, I feel very troubled by the reversal of this committee report. Uh, but like, like most times, I uh, succumbed to the recommendation of an appointed committee for Congress. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And that's all I have on that. I'm just worried that all the men left in Koshai will become hungry because it seems that all their wives are here in the chamber to observe this session. Thank you, Chairman Christian. As well, always, we uh, move for previous question, to, Mr. Speaker. Excuse me. Move for previous question. Second. If no objection, there is a motion for the previous question, which is for the adoption of the said report in favor of the seating of Senator-elect four-year seat Jocelyn George uh, Segra. All those in favor of adoption of the said report say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Aye. Motion carried. Congress has adopted the report. Next item, Chief Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We're now on item two of the special order for today's uh, session. Okay, we are now on the second uh, credentials of the senators elect from the state of Koshai and from the state of Chuk. And be, please take note that the same members, the same chair and members of the previous credentials uh, Committee on Credentials will be the same. Chairman Nimia will be the chair. Members Abelio Alfonso, uh, Chairman uh, Figuier, and also Vice Speaker Romolo. So let's take a short recess so that you could break out into caucus and then come back with your report. Short recess. Congress is back in session. We are now on item four, subsection two, item B, where the committee will present its report. So, Chairman Nimia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as is the case with the previous report, I'll also read verbatim uh, this report for the sake of transparency. Your Committee on Credentials, to which was referred the review of credentials for two members elect to the 23rd Congress from the February 2024 special election, begs to leave to report as follows. On March 1st, 2024, the National Election Director transmitted to Congress the unofficial results of the February 29, 2024 special election. On March 4, 2024, the National Election Director certified the official results of the February 29, 2024 special election, certifying the winning candidates. The members elect are one, Julio M. Mara, Duke Election District Number One, two-year term seat, and two, Johnson A. Hasher, Koshrai Election District 1, two-year term seat. Your Committee on Credentials has carefully reviewed the eligibility and qualifications of the elected candidates. Article 9, Section 9 of the FSM Constitution mandates that a person is eligible to run for election to be a member of Congress if the person is at least 30 years old on the day of the election, 
and ever same citizen by birth, a domiciliary of the state from which elected and residing in the FSM for at least five years prior to election. A person is eligible to be a member of Congress under 9th FSM GOAT, subsection 103 if one, 30 years or older by election day, two, a resident from the state which seeking election for at least five years prior to election day, three, FSM citizen, four, not under a current judgment of mental incompetency or insanity, and five, not convicted of a felony by a FSM national court, FSM state court, and, or trust territory government court. Your committee reaffirms Congress exclusive authority as the sole judge of the elections and qualifications of its members. Article 9, Section 17 of the FSM Constitution dictates that Congress shall be the sole judge of the elections and qualifications of its members, may discipline a member, and by two-thirds vote, may suspend or expel a member. The committee requested criminal background checks on the elected candidates from the FSM Department of Justice, National Police, FSM Supreme Court, and its state police chief, attorney general, and state court. In a letter dated April 2, 2024, the FSM Department of Justice certified to Congress that Julio M. Marar and Johnson A. Hosher did not have any felony convictions and no pardon records. In a letter dated March 28, 2024, the FSM Supreme Court certified to Congress that Julio M. Marar and Johnson A. Hosher did not have any felony convictions and no pardon records. The State Court of Yap certified to Congress that Julio M. Marar and Johnson A. Hosher did not have any criminal records. The Koshra State Records certified to Congress that Julio M. Marar and Johnson A. Hosher did not have any pending nor prior records with the State Court. Pompey State Supreme Court certified to Congress that Julio M. Marar and Johnson A. Hosher did not have any conviction records. The Office of the Attorney General for Koshara certified to Congress that there was no record of any violations of state criminal laws by Julia Marr and Johnson A. Usher. Your committee requested photo registration cards and candidate documentation submitted to the Office of the National Election Director to demonstrate to have the same citizens by birth permanent residents in state were elected and physically residing the FSM for the last five years. In a letter dated January 22, 2024, the FSM Department of Health and Social Affairs reported to the election director that the department did not have any record of Julia Marr and Johnson A. Usher in their mental health data records. Your committee on credential fines based on her careful review and deliberations that elected candidates Julio M. Marr and Johnson A. Hosher meet the eligibility requirement under Article 9, Section 9 of the FSM Constitution and 9 FSM GOAT, subsection 103. Pursuant to Article 9, Section 17 of the FSM Constitution, your committee finds that both elected candidates are qualified to serve and be seated as a member of Congress. In conclusion, your committee on credentials is in full accord with the credentials of Julio Amar and Johnson A. Asher. Your committee recommends, recommends that Julio Amar and Johnson A. Asher be permitted to take the oath of office and be seated as member and senator of the 23rd Congress of the Fair States of Micronesia. So that's the end of the report, and so I move for adoption of the report. It's been moved and seconded that Congress adopt the report on the, up the report of the Committee on Credentials for the senator, senators elect from the state of Chuk and Koshai. Discussion? 
Chairman Christian, you have the floor. Yes, on page two of the report, I would like to offer an oral amendment to the report. Uh, may I, Mr. Speaker? Go ahead. Uh, the last paragraph, I move that we delete the following sentence. Your committee reaffirms Congress' exclusive authority as the sole judge of the elections and qualifications of its members. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Short recess. Let's go back. Well, the offered oral amendment to the said report was not seconded. Therefore, uh, it was not moved. So any further discussion on the said report? Question. If no objection. Question has been called for. All those in favor of adoption of the said report say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carried. The report on the, from the Committee on Credentials has been adopted by Congress. Next item, Chief Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We're now on item number three of the special order, and that is the administration of the oath of office. Okay. I would like to now ask that the Sergeant at Arms please escort the three senators elect along with their uh, family members to the front of the podium and also escort in Acting Chief Justice for the administration of oath and short recess. Congress is back in session. All right, thank you. Please continue. Okay, uh, Senator elect Chansani Asher. Senator elect Julio M. Morar. Senator elect Yoslin G. Sikra. Okay, you will take your oath of office. You will repeat after me. After you say I, please state your name. Now raise your right hand and your left hand on your Bible. Take your oath of office. I solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of senator of the 23rd Congress of the Federated States of Micronesia and will, to the best of my ability, uphold, promote, and support the laws and the Constitution of the Federated States of Micronesia. So help me God. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Acting Chief Justice. I would like to ask for a short recess so that the Sergeant at Arm can escort out the family members and staff pages. Please escort the members to their respective seats. Short recess. Let us go back. Before we move on any more further, I would like to ask the Chief Clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Abel Alfonso? Amen. Senator Ardos? Yes. Senator Asher? Uh, Senator Christian? Amen. Senator Figuier? Senator Colin? Yes. Senator Conman? Yes. Floor Leader Lawrence? Amen. Senator Marar? Senator Nemeya? Yes. Vice Speaker Omalo? Amen. Senator Sikra? Senator Urusamal? Speaker Moses? Hey. Mr. Speaker, 13 members are present. Thank you, Chief Clerk. With that, we have 
still a quorum, but 13 members. And if it weren't for the logistics, we would have had a full house today. Mm -hmm. Next item, Chief Clerk. Point of privilege, Speaker. State your point. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning to you and good morning to all the members and everyone. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, first to um, let the record show the dignitaries that are um, present with us this morning uh, in the second uh, special session of the 23rd Congress. I would like to begin with recognizing and welcoming <clears throat> His Excellency, the President of the Nation, Wesley W. Simena. Let's all please give him a <laughs> The Vice President of the Federated States of Micronesia, the Honorable Aaron B. Palik. Uh, the First Lady, Mrs. Anseli Simena. I'd like also to recognize the presence of our Acting Chief Justice Warswick, let me also recognize um, the presence of uh, the Koshrai State Governor, Honorable Palik. And our um, Pompeii State Governor, Honorable Joseph. I am also pleased to introduce or also let the record and, and welcome our members of the Diplomatic Corps who, are, who have joined us today. I'd like to begin with uh, Ambassador Wu Wei, Embassy of the People's Republic of China. <laughs> Ambassador Kachomia Nopuo, Embassy of Japan. and Ambassador Jennifer L. Johnson, Embassy of the United States of America. And I also like to recognize um, some members of the Pompeii State Legislature that are with us this morning. First off is the Honorable Senator um, Kukuak Apis Jr. And I also would like to recognize uh, Honorable Senator Isaac A. Artui. And I also need to recognize the, the spouse, or else I'll be in trouble, Mrs. Artui, and their granddaughter, whose name is Snow White. Um, there are a few that traveled and are with us to witness uh, this morning's, uh, the opening session. And we have also, coming from the Republic of the Marshall Islands, the Minister of TCNI, TCNIT, Minister Hilden Kendall. Board member Jerry Nathan, the executive director of the Board of Authority, Thomas Madison, and for us for recognition as well from our good chairman of the Credentials Committee, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, his wife, Mrs. Ayla Nimea spouse of Chairman Nimea. And the former colleagues of uh, Nimea, Chairman Nimea from the Eversem Development Bank. And I just leave the rest with all the other members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for that. I'm kind of jealous my the speaker's wife is also in the gallery, but was not recognized. But that's okay. My apologies, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. 
Okay, I have a question here on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My wife is not here, but I just want to acknowledge that she is still married to me. <laughs> Mr. You. Speaker, I take this opportunity with your permission to, uh, from my seat, my desk, welcome the new members uh, who have become members of the 23rd Congress. Uh, just so you know, and I'm sure you do, that when there is appropriations for public projects, you will be very popular. And when there is no public projects money, you will be the scorn of your community. Uh, but welcome to Congress, and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you, Chairman Christian. Speaker. Uh, Vice Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning to you and uh, colleagues. Let me also associate myself with the previous speaker in welcoming the, His Excellency President Simina, the First Lady, and the Honorable Vice President Palik and uh, Mrs. Palik. And also to extend and welcome the new members of the 23rd Congress. I don't want to miss to introduce some important chukis who are in the gallery, as I am an elected official. An election is around the corner next year, so I want to make sure that uh, I'll be recognized uh, by these chukis. Uh, even though they're not from Northwest, but uh, well, we never know if I may be in the at-large seat uh, next year. So <laughs> let me begin by uh, begging the indulgence of this body to recognize these few chukis, and I apologize if I miss all the names. Uh, but I begin with the, uh, the lovely wife of the newly elected uh, senator, Mrs. Uh, Marar, uh, Mrs. Ryle, Mrs. Williander, uh, and the other uh, spouses, and also in the gallery, Mr. Speaker, and uh, colleagues, we have Stephen Robert, uh, P.J. Petrus, and uh, Grace Williander, and I believe also Montel Tim. So with the others that I failed to recognize, I would ask that we re recognize all the Chukis in the gallery and who are tuning in to social media by a, good, a big round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Vice Speaker. Chief Clerk, next item. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please note that uh, we're back to the regular order. So the next item is uh, part two of item number four, which is the appointment of committee to wait on the president. Thank you, Chief Clerk. I will now appoint the committee to wait on the president. Chairman will be Madam Chair Avilio Alfonso. Member will be Vice Speaker Romolo. Member Chairman Isaac Pigier. And also Member Yoselin Sigra. And Madam Chair, please consult with the President so that you may get a time and venue of the meeting with the President and short recess while you consult. Congress is back in session. Next item, Chief Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We're now on Mr. item Mr. Speaker. Number. Chairman Christian. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. There are a few events that Congress have, and this, what we had this morning, was one of the most solemn, and that is the swearing in of members. And so as not to stain the solemnity of that occasion, I move that we recess until tomorrow at 10. Second. It's been moved and seconded that Congress stand in recess until tomorrow at 10. And before we vote, Madam Chair Abelio Alfonso, would you like to care to announce your scheduled meeting with the President? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the committee to wait on the President will be meeting uh, with His Excellency and Vice President at 1 p.m. today. So if there may be other issues that the rest of my colleagues may want to 
bring up for us to bring to the attention of the president, please do so before 1 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, please take note if you have some time. Maybe we could meet in the members' lounge if anybody cares to, uh, to have some issues being taken down to the president. Okay, we have that motion. All those in favor of the said motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carried. Congress stands in recess until 10 a.m. tomorrow.